Hey guys, welcome back to Victory Gardens by Rain. I wanted to give a special announcement today. Today we are going to give you a tour to our brand new homestead. I'm excited, so excited to show you that. Uh, we ended up making a move due to some of my health issues and uh, we were able to really um, get our hands on a beautiful piece of property. Uh, and I am so excited to show it to you. So right behind me, it, we're at the end of my driveway. My driveway is over 700 feet long, which is amazing. But I wanted to point out this piece of property because this is one of the major projects that I have planned for this year. I want to set this up as some sort of a pollinator garden and I want to plant a tree uh, memor memorable in memory of tree right down here. Um, and I'm gonna hopefully take and turn this into a beautiful landscaped piece so that when people pull into our driveway uh, they'll be able to see just some joy as they come through so we have this area um, right after we moved in we had a water pipe bust which is why it's dug up right here we had the call before you dig come out and trace some um, wiring and things for us so that we could go ahead and continue our plan. But if you'll follow me, we're gonna come down through this way. And this is my driveway. <laughs> it is quite large. But um, what I wanted to do, hey, Splinter, come. Shorty, come. All right, so the most exciting thing that I uh, wanna share with you guys today is the fact that we have an entire blackberry a uh, wild blackberry grove bush situation growing down our uh, entire fence line most of our fence line separating our property from the property next door uh, there is a mobile home community right next door and so um, there's a lot of screening and things going on with the overgrown brush that we want to take and change into more of a formal planting and we want to kind of clear out the unhealthy trees and the unhealthy underbrush and replace it with something that is native and more focused on landscape design and more of a formal look to come down the driveway. Uh, but in the midst of it, if you'll follow me, are so many wild blackberries. <laughs> all the way down it goes down so far and uh, we're actually going to do a video pretty soon about how to care for and how to maintain uh, wild blackberries versus cultivated blackberries and there's a big difference there uh, but i'm very excited about this this already puts us on a head start for sustainability and i grew up um, in and out of east tennessee and my family's property up there was covered in wild blackberries and this is just such a sweet treat that god provided for us when we moved into this place that made my heart just so happy because there's nothing like a fresh blackberry uh it's just amazing so i'm really excited about that i've already started printing out recipes to kind of get a head start on preserving those but as we continue down the driveway, you can go faster. As we continue down the driveway, it goes all the way down, probably about 200 feet of uh, just straight blackberry bushes. And um, all of that is over a kind of a livestock fence, which we'll be replacing with more of a pasture fence in there. Um, probably not this year. That'll probably be a 2025 project. Uh, this year is just going to be learning the property and maintaining what we have, plus building the garden, which you'll see where we're going to do that. So over here, um, this is my neighbor's property. Our driveway is actually one very slim part of our property. We have two full acres uh, once we pass this property line right here. But my neighbor, um, who are just the cutest things ever, 
they uh, originally this was their daughter's home and they built on family property uh, so it's kind of very close knit right here and I'm really excited about that because they're adorable but they have and they have for years had um, pecan trees and so over here behind me there are four or, I'm sorry there's three I can't count <laughs> three pecan trees oh the fourth one's up here right there <laughs> I knew there was four so there's four pecan trees which I'm really excited about because um, pecans are a very great resource to have around and um, I'm hoping you know we could switch maybe some blackberries for some pecans or whatever you know I don't know it's just nice to have on the property um, or near the property but they are very very kind and um, have given us a lot of wisdom he was actually the one that pointed out our uh, busted pipe for us and so it's been such a blessing to have neighbors who are very intentional and very sweet so I'm very thankful for that other than that we don't have any neighbors <laughs> uh, my back neighbors are cows which I'm super excited I hope they're back there when we go out there but so we have some pecan trees right here and then this is about where the blackberry situation ends but as you go through here there's a lot of old growth that needs to be maintained this is a cedar tree that's completely eaten up and covered in uh, wild briars and you know bramble and things like that some vines I'm not sure I haven't identified yet and we're just wanting to clear that out to make it look a lot more tidy these trees right here will probably be cut down as well because they are being choked out uh, with all of this dead bramble and briar um, more of this is overgrown privet under all of that so this right here is the beginning of our property line which if you I don't know if you can see it through the camera right now but there's a tree that kind of has a Y uh, Mr. Barney and Mr. Margie, that's who lives next door, um, they told me that the Y is the beginning of our property line, so I think that's pretty neat. Um, so it actually starts right here on the, le the left side, if you're facing the road, uh, but our property actually, as you go down the driveway, our property line kind of widens between the fence, between the mobile home company uh, community and our driveway, so it kind of just extends out like this. So we're going to have a lot of room to do some plantings on this side. Um, I really want to hit natives and I really want to do some sort of privacy screen. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of tossing some things around. But so from starting here um, on the left hand side, that's two full acres that our home is sitting on. And this is our beautiful home. Can you see it? Okay. So. Um, that is our wonderful home that God provided for us. It's all one level, which I absolutely love, so I don't have any stairs to climb, except for my son's room. It's a bonus room, and he gets to do all the climbing, which Jackson is our cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> so he's going to help me out doing this channel, and we're going to kind of learn together because we also last year started the adventure of homeschooling, uh, which has been absolutely incredible and we've loved it. Have you loved it? Yes, yes. very much so. <laughs> so I have too. Um, so that'll be integrate, inter, integrated, incorporated into um, kind of what we're doing here at Victory Gardens. Because um, I believe that God calls us to do certain things at certain times and I want to share that with you guys and I want to be transparent. I want to bring you along and what's on the homestead is what's on the homestead. So, and let's continue with our tour right here to the right. We have a parking pad area. If it's about four compact cars, um, we're probably going to do a more permanent border. I've got over here, there has been Uh, 
bush ivy has been planted in the ground. Um, so that is gonna be quite the adventure, trying to get it up. If you are thinking about planting English ivy, just do not do it. So we've got a lot of that to clean up. Sir, come. Um, there's splinter. <laughs> trying to get to the so there's quite a bit of room, probably about 15 to 20 feet between the back of the landing pad to the fence. So we're gonna extend this out a little bit further um, so that we can have better plant, uh, parking situation. And I have some roses up front that I'm thinking about moving out here to have kind of like a more formal welcome blooming situation. I don't know, we'll figure it out. So all through here uh, is a lot of wild privet or Chinese privet. And then um, it's underplanted with all of that ivy. There's a couple of the floripedlums that are out here that look like maybe at one point in time it was landscape dish. Um, and that's and that's okay. And we're just trying to move that out. Uh, there's, I don't really know how many different trees we're gonna be able to rescue. I'm gonna have an arborist come out and help me along with that type of, of decision but um, mainly we're just gonna try to tidy this up and get the underbrush under control for this year. The trees might be a next year type situation. But starting here, there's quite a bit of room extended out and I would like to take and plant this and make this the fruit tree orchard because I think that would be just absolutely wonderful to have this entire space, including the, um, I guess now that we're looking at the house, the left side of the house, there's three well, four, but one of them's kind of broke, but there's four Leland cypresses right beside the house that we're already, we've already discussed and we're going to take those out because we would like the access to the backyard, especially while we are digging um, and creating the garden space. That's gonna be really exciting. Um, so we're going to extend out and I pr I'm thinking, to naturally kind of fade the orchard into the garden space uh, back in the back, which I'll show you, uh, but come this way. That's the plan for over here. Right here is a Japanese maple that I'm absolutely excited about. The leaves on them are just fire engine red. Uh, we had a chance to move in November the 29th of 2023 and uh, that sucker was in its glory and it was beautiful and i'm really excited about that right here is an eastern redbud tree which is so near and dear to my heart because like i said earlier um, i spent a lot of time in east tennessee growing up and i have a specific picture of my dad leaned up against an eastern redbud with his sunglasses on and his plaid shirt and i actually still have that plaid shirt but um it was really sweet to see that little god wink when we moved in that it, that was what this tree is so we're probably going to remove this um uh water oak now when i say and i start talking about removing trees i do want to be very clear we're going to use every bit of the tree as much as we can to provide for our family uh, we're going to use the limbs for mulch to build our garden soil we're going to use the logs to either have as firewood or we're going to do mushrooms, which I'm so excited about growing mushrooms. My husband is actually quite on board with that. And um, I think he is potentially going to be a little mushroom nerd, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll probably incorporate that into some homeschool activities and things like that. But all of our um, decisions that we make on this homestead will be for the longevity and the sustainability of this property. And we're going to try to steward it in the best way possible. Which brings me to this huge cedar right behind me. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I love this tree. However, uh, there is English ivy. I don't know if you can see it with the sun. There's an entire island bordered out, planted uh, with English ivy, and it has actually grown up the trunk of the tree and into the tree enough to where it has completely choked it out and it is covered in disease and blight. And so we are going to actually have to take this tree down 
Um, I did get a chance to use some of the limbs to make a wreath uh, for Christmas with my daughter and my son. It was really fun to do so, which I'm excited about being able to harvest things from our property to do those types of projects with. But so this entire situation is going to change. We're cutting this tree down um, and then probably just clearing this out and it may turn into lawn uh, but I'm not sure for how long <laughs> so we're not sure we're not really focused on the front yard for now um, but this is our front door and uh, right here there's a lot of there's not a lot of uh, landscape going on here except for roses now these roses are very beautiful and there's a peach colored one, a red, kind of like a pinky red, a very pale pink, a yellow, which I'm so excited about yellow roses, and um, just more shades of pink and red, but um, there's one peachy one that's in there, and there's little spots of daylilies up here, and there's some of that, um, Um, oh, I'm sticking on it. It's not Laura Pedlum. It's um, Liriope. Sorry. That's what this is right here. The variegated, variegated Liriope, which um, we're going to probably pull that out and use it somewhere else in the landscape because my, my vision here is I'd like to keep some of the roses, but I really crave um, some evergreens and I'd like to get some year round interest going for the first uh, the first view that you see here at the house. You can cut it there. Okay, so over here, like I said, these are all roses. This is coming down the front to our home. Um, I wanted to point out right here in front of the front windows. Here, I'll walk over there. This is a Carolina Jasmine, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I actually may take some of these roses out and put some sort of bench here with an arbor situation so that we could really showcase this beautiful plant. And then right here behind Jack's is a clematis that we'll probably relocate depending on uh, what I come up with uh -huh. for this front. Oh, he's getting eat up by the way. Uh -huh. Okay, Jack, you want this way? So again, a lot of roses. This thing right here is going. I can't think of the name of it right this minute, but they're highly invasive and and they I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, that's coming out and we're gonna try to pull the roses to be our second layer and then we're gonna have the back layer some sort of evergreen. I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with that yet. This is a crepe myrtle, which I do not know what color it is, um, but I'm excited about it. I like them. I'm hoping it's a native variety, but we'll see. Um, over here, our property goes way up there. This, um, this set of trees is on our property right there, but all the way down, there's a couple of roses, more of these bushes. This tree right here behind me is a cherry tree along with this guy right here, which I'm super stoked about. All right, these bushes um, are going. We're not, they're too, they're too old and they're too established for them to be that close to the house. So we're actually gonna extend this bed out. Sorry to interrupt. We have cherry trees? Yeah, but they're not um, cherry producing, fruit producing trees. Uh. These are strictly ornamental. Yeah. Okay, thank you for yeah. Which, clarifying. If you see up there, Jax, you can see the buds already start to form because they are one of the first bloomers in our region, which is, oh. uh, we're 7B, now we're 8A with the zone change. So the, these will be one of the first things to bloom. Awesome. So, super stoked about that. As you come around the side of the house, um, this is the backyard. Look at off the running. <laughs> This is the backyard. I've got two uh, camellias right here, which if you come in close, it's already got some buds on it. 
which camellias are um, winter blooming, late blooming, and I'm not sure what variety this is, uh, but I will do some research on it and get it once it starts going. You know, this is also a camellia, which this is a different color bloom. So they're two different varieties. So I'm pretty excited about that. And it looks like we will probably relocate these um, if we can, because you shouldn't have them this close to the house. And camellias really are not good to be shorn. Um, so we want to bring them back to their, you know, all their glory that they want to be. Jackson is very excited about our pool. Yes, um, I am. This was not something that we were looking for, but it was definitely a bonus for the babies and they're all excited about that. I was looking for it. Yeah, you were. So, um, we have quite a few. These were banana trees and in, in our region, banana trees are, they, um, are deciduous, they go away. And so we'll probably divide these and put them around. I don't want anything around the pool because I really like the view coming out. So this is our backyard. And right here is a, I can't really tell from here and I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but it goes quite a bit uh, that way to the property that's behind us. So um, Mr. Barney and Mr. Marty's property ends right in our front yard and then right beside them was also their property, but they just recently sold it um, earlier in the year of 2023. And there's a young couple there uh, that's restoring that property, but it is a pecan grove over there. And right at the end of the pecan grove starts a pasture for cows. And um, you can tell that they're meat cows because of their tag, but it's kind of like a tea property. So it comes beside our property and then behind our property. So I, I get to see cows all the time and they're just beautiful and they're so sweet. They come right up to the fence. Uh, Splinter is like best friends with two of the cows. Two, the two of the same cows come up and talk to Splinter. It's so cute, it is the cutest thing. But so we'll probably divide these, maybe donate some to some people who want them but I like the foliage texture of banana trees, but I really love and crave this view. So again, if we'll start over here, we're going to clear out the underbrush here. My vision for this area, my vision for this area is to have a um, patio put here with some sort of fire pit or like a fireplace or some something right here uh, once we get it safe to where we can have a fire because right now it's just covered in a whole bunch of stuff so we have a lot of clean out but that is my idea here because it kind of makes it makes like a circle so all this is open you can see the path there a little bit better from over here uh, we do struggle with fine weed really badly back here it is all over the place um my, I, actually, that's why he's naked right now is because he got tangled up <laughs> in the briar. But our property goes back past those trees and around. But I like this little area because it just kind of goes around. I want to keep these trees. Jackson, you're going to be excited to hear this because I think these would be great hammock trees. <gasps> yeah. You're right, they are. Yeah. Along way, kind of back a little bit around there, um, and then I'll show you the shed that came with our house. And I'm really excited about this. We this didn't have to build perfect this one. Condition. The people who owned this home before us were impeccable, they took very good care of it. There's not any projects for us to have to do, we don't have to fix anything. Um, I mean, the water pipe broke, but that is a 20 year old home. So that's kind of what comes with it. But um, this structure right here, I'm really excited about because it gives me my own potting shed. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You can adjust. So um, in here, we'll do a tour of that another day once I get it situated. I still have most of my gardening things stashed at a friend's house right now. And so 
we're really trying to get it to where I can bring everything into one spot. But speaking of one spot, this is the garden spot. So we're actually gonna take this tree down uh, right here. And the garden is gonna go from about the side of the shed over to about where that water is, it's right there. And it's gonna come and go and be right here. So oh, we're standing right in the middle of the garden or the garden to come in 2024. We're gonna hopefully start breaking ground on that within the next few weeks. So I'm very excited about that. I've already got seeds going in my office right now. So really excited about that. Is, is that in the film? What? You make it. No, my hands are just one. It's so cold. cold. It is so cold out here. It's like 50 degrees. We're freezing. The tips um, of my fingers are turning a little purple. <laughs> That's why I'm moving Well, let's them. hurry up and wrap it up. But I did want to say uh, another thing that I'm super excited about with this property is that right behind me is going to be the chicken coop. So we're going to, we're getting chickens. So I'm really excited about that. That's the first step that I have uh, planned to help get us a little bit more sustainable. And I really want the chickens to work for me in the garden and different things like that. So um, I'm really excited about that. I'm thinking this area right here, once we cut down these Leland cypresses, this might be where I put my permanent greenhouse. I'm not sure. There's a lot of sun that comes here. We're actually, the house faces, the back end is east and it faces west. So the sun actually goes right across our house. We're gonna have a lot of sun and a lot of opportunity with that. But, so that's our, our property, that's our homestead. We've got a few um, hydrangeas over here on the other side of the house, but I don't like going over there because I have to go through the trees, but there's just a little area over there. Once we get those trees cut down, which by the way, do not plant Leland cypresses. Just don't do it. They're not native here. They don't live here. They only last about 20 years, which you think is a long time, but it's really not because 20 years is now, and now I have to deal with the disease and the blight that are in these trees. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, this is it. This is our new homestead. I'm so excited about the plans that we have going on. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, if you like what you saw or if you're interested in our journey, please like and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that um, you can get notified each time we put a video. We have a goal of videos, but I'm not sure how that's going to tie in and we're just kind of just starting this journey. So um, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for being here and I hope y'all have a blessed day.